Dear colleagues, my name is Dr. Mirjana Živano. Uh, well, uh, let me begin with a huge thanks to you, Dr. Haji Kudiat, as well as the organizers of the International Forum for Promoting Homeopathy and its great contribution in sharing the knowledge and experience between the homeopaths all over the world in this difficult time. Today, I want to talk about my matrix method in homeopathy, so let's get started. The matrix method is a new approach to the classical homeopathy focused on the nature of the vital force while fully respecting the principles Hahnemann has laid out in the organon and the chronic diseases. In order to understand its place in the classical homeopathy, we have to go back to the very beginning of the organon, the nature of the vital force. To explain the concept of vital force, Hahnemann uses the word dynamis. This is one pole of the Aristotelian duality dynamis energia, in Latin potentia energia, meaning the potential, the source. That is why we homeopaths use the term potentizing remedy to activate its dynamis, its potential. In the Organon, Hahnemann teaches us about the dynamic nature of diseases and remedies as well as the vital force itself. In Aphorism 9, in the healthy condition of man, the spiritual vital force autocracy, uh, the dynamis that animates the material body organism, rules with unbounded sway and retains all the parts of the organism in admirable, harmonious, vital operation. In the aphorism 11, what is dynamic influence, dynamic power? A hidden invisible energy. Hahnemann compares it to the magnetic force, the energy of a magnet attracting a piece of iron or steel is not material, not mechanical. One sees the piece of iron is attracted by one pole of the magnet, but how it is done is not seen. Here Hahnemann used the comparison with magnetism because it is a natural phenomenon most similar to the vital force. Both magnetism and vital force are forms of potential energy. Magnetism is potential energy between two poles of a magnet expressed only in contact with the external influence, a piece of iron. Just like the vital force is potential energy expressed only in contact with the dynamic influence of a morbific agent inimical to life, Organon Aphorism 11, in both, in both cases this potential energy is expressed as a reaction to external influence. So we could say that the vital force is reactive. The Northern Lights, Aurora Borealis, are the most beautiful expression of the Earth's magnetism with the atmosphere. We could say it's almost like it is out of this world, a window to the magnetic fluid of the astral plane. It is important to point out that water on a molecular level is also a dipole, behaving similarly to a magnet with two poles, and we all know the importance of, wa of water memory for homeopathy. Hahnemann told us how to potentize, dynamize a substance to prepare a homeopathic remedy, and it is very similar to the way a nail is magnetized by the stroking with the one pole of the magnet. It is another similarity of magnetism and the vital force. Just like there is no magnetism in a magnet without two magnetic poles, there can't be dynamism in the dynamis, the vital force, without two vital poles, a pair of polar opposites. So, what is a vital pole? One pole of the vital force. 
Magnetic force is similar to the vital force and magnetic poles to the vital poles. Both magnetic poles together make the code of a person, a situation or a remedy. The pair of vital poles is not the prima causa morbi, but it is the first symptom and its opposite. Prima causa morbi is the original cause of a disease, was used as a speculative idea in the old school allopathy. Hahnemann told us uh, to use only the symptoms expressed by a patient and never these misleading and impractical speculations. The first symptom is the first reaction of the vital force to some inimical agent. Hahnemann repeatedly points out that the homeopath only prescribes the remedy based on the symptoms and all these perceptible signs represent the disease in its whole extent, aphorism 6. We all know how subtle the vital force is. So getting to the vital pole, pair of polar opposites that generates it, is no simple task. The quest for these vital poles, pairs of polar opposites, is what the matrix method is used for, and in this quest it uses the most subtle part of our being, our emotions and sensations. The emotions and sensations are also the first symptoms of the dynamic influence of morbific agent inimical to life, Organon aphorism 11. The first symptom is one of the pair of power poles that shows us the state of the vital force and the remedy we need to prescribe. For example, as we all know, a lycopodium person is worried all the time about losing his her social position, about education, job, children to have high marks at school. When that is achieved, they feel proud, while in any failure they feel shame. The main goal in life of a lycopodium like person is to achieve things that make him feel proud. They make long-term plans and every achieved step of that plan makes them more and more proud. Then something happens in their life, often an adultery or some failure or of a child, that gets them overwhelmed by shame and the pride is gone. We can see that the whole life of a lycopodium like person is in essence driven by pride, or shame, so these are the opposites that make its code. In another example, the code for the remedy Calcarea Phosphorica is love-anger. Calcarea Phosphorica person is searching for love all life long, dreaming about an ideal partner. Once he she finally believes to have found the true love, some disappointment happens that tears it all apart and jealous anger emerges. The cause for the disappointment may be an addiction of a partner or a parent and they are so angry because they can't understand how their addiction is more important than love. Actually, whenever love isn't at the first place for their partner, as it always is for them because of the influence of the Calcarea Phosphorica code, love, anger, they get disappointed and start to feel angry. Once again, we can see how every reaction of a person may be traced back to their own code as its cause. In this case, we can see that there is nothing deeper than dynamism between the love and the anger. This is rooted deep in the unconscious and the person is a slave of his her code that unannoyingly takes part in every decision, every reaction and also influencing everybody around. A perfect balance never exists in the real world, so the pair of opposites always affects a person, sometimes just a little, and other times he or she gets completely consumed by one of the opposites. The only moment when a person's soul is in equilibrium is after the similium. That is the state of oneness, a kind of personal enlightenment. It is very important to get to the first symptom, this first reaction of the patient's vital force, because it is the clearest impression of the disorder. 
As the time passes, this impression is watered down by many other factors and it gets harder to recognize. The first symptom has a very high emotional charge and the patient remembers it as long as the disorder that caused it lasts. It is like the sprout of a tree and all the symptoms that come up later are like branches and twigs clouded by many external influences as well as the patient's own constitution. This sprout represents the beginning of a disorder with the first two leaves as the vital poles. You can see in this picture both the visible and invisible parts. The visible green part are the symptoms we can see on the patient and the invisible the root is the cause, usually some traumatic event when it all started. The cause often has strong karmic threads. The root of the sprout is the event that happened just before it all started. The beginning of the disorder is followed by a very high emotional charge and the patient remembers it as long as the disorder that caused it lasts. It is like an energetic emotional scar and as long as the scar lasts, there is a remembrance. When a patient gets the similimum, the energetic scar is healed and this highly charged emotion is forgotten, changing the event from crucial to insignificant in that person's life. In time, the first symptom multiplies to all sorts essentially similar symptoms like a whole tree of symptoms. In this picture, we can see how just one pair of first symptoms can in time grow to a whole tree of symptoms. And we can find it in the repertory together with so many trees of symptoms. So, the repertory is like a whole jungle of trees. When a homeopath starts searching for a single tree in this whole jungle, knowing the first symptom will help a great deal. The potential energy of the sprout is very high, just like the emotional charge is expressing the first symptom. That emotional charge only grows with every new form of expression, every new symptom, because every new symptom is a new limitation for the patient and a new frustration. The patient feels he is imprisoned, limited by his symptoms. The first symptoms limits him already and every following symptom elevates the already high emotional charge. The patient feels something is happening to him but he doesn't understand why. In time this gets too much for the mental and emotional plane to bear so it spills over to the physical plane of the patient causing a physical condition. The symptoms that follow the first are like a house of mirrors where every mirror gives us a different distorted view of the original object. The further the object is, the harder it gets to recognize it. With every new distorted reaction of the vital force, new symptom, the charge rises because the patient gets more and more confused and unsatisfied not knowing what is going on. That is why the first symptom, as closest one to the disorder, is the best way to get to the remedy. As every homeopathic remedy has its own unique totality of symptoms, the pair of vital poles that generate its dynamics must also be specific for each remedy. The vital force of each one of us is unique and pair of vital poles that generates it is similar to one homeopathic remedy, the similimum, constitutional remedy, or as I prefer to call it, the sole remedy. In the matrix method, the central theme is the code. And what is the code? It is the first pair of polar opposites, vital poles, representing the essence of the remedy. In each one of us there are many pairs of opposites, but only one is the code that defines our essence. As each remedy has its own code, finding the code is essential for efficient use of the matrix method. We have been finding the codes of the remedies for almost 10 years and successfully using them in our clinical practice. 
When we recognize the code during the case taking or follow up, we are directed to remedy with that same code. The art of the matrix method is how to get to the code of a patient, how to recognize it among many other pairs of opposites that are the patient mentions during the interview. To find the code, we need to follow our most subtle reactions, our emotions. We should understand the nature of the emotions and behavior that leads us to the code. For understanding the nature of the emotions and behavior, we have created the Tetractis model that helps us in this task and shows us the miasm of the patient in his current condition. Very deep down in the multicellular organisms, there are three basic monoamines, noradrenaline, dopamine and serotonin, that shape the behavioral and emotional patterns. We use the Tetractis model to visualize the behavioral and emotional states shaped by the ratio and predominance of which one of these three monoamines. It is one of the key elements of the matrix method in homeopathy. So, the Tetractis model presents the basic emotions and behaviors in 10 spheres based on ratios of the three monoamines, serotonin, dopamine and noradrenaline. The high serotonin level is associated with the top sphere of the tractis, sphere control and contempt. High dopamine level with lower left corner, sphere anticipation of reward. And high noradrenaline level with lower right corner, sphere actions and aroused. In homeopathy, Hahnemann has defined the three miasms as something that lays beneath a deep and overwhelming influence. The Hahnemann's miasms can be associated with the three monoamines, serotonin, dopamine and noradrenaline. The spheres influenced by serotonin are associated with syphilitic miasm and form the syphilitic triangle of the tractis. The spheres influenced by dopamine are associated with psoric miasm and form the psoric triangle of the tractis. And the spheres influenced by noradrenaline are associated with psychotic miasm and form the psychotic triangle of the tractis. Here we can see all three miasmatic triangles in one image. After this theoretical segment, we will now move on to a clinical case. This is a case from my clinic where the matrix method has been used for the past 10 years. Our classical homeopathic clinical practice was crucial for the development of the matrix method. At the early stages of development of this method, we only use it for our patients whose constitutional remedy was proven a long time before matrix. So, as the similimum in these cases was already proven, we were able to find the code for the remedy with great certainty. Now, we will see the case Ignatia Amara with the use of the Tetractis model. The patient came to our clinic because of the frequent soft stools six or seven times a day that started on a business trip a year ago. The patient said that on that business trip he had to hold a lecture on a topic he wasn't familiar with, so he got very anxious and stressed and it triggered this condition. At the time he was chronically tired and exhausted because his newborn child was crying all night, so he couldn't sleep and rest as well as because of stress at work. Frequent soft stools didn't stop when he came back home from the trip and it always gets a lot worse when he goes on a business trip. He looked very tired with dark circles around his eyes. His face looked bloated and he was walking sluggishly. He used to be a professional football player. He had a very strong appetite and he gained a lot of weight. He was diagnosed with non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. It is hard for him to fall asleep, so he watches TV very late at night. He twists and turns in bed all night. 
The patient said that he tried everything to stop these frequent soft stools, all kinds of allopathic medicines and home remedies, but with no result. When he was asked how he felt about it, he said, powerless, with a very high emotional charge. According to the matrix method, powerless is one of the opposite in the code for Ignatia Amara. We can see on the Tractis model that he is in the sphere melancholy and sadness of his syphilitic triangle of the Tractis. Based on the classical case taking and the matrix method, he was prescribed Ignatia Amara C200. On the follow-up, he said that the first day after the remedy, he finally had a normal but still softer stool just one or two times a day. He couldn't believe it. He was in a great mood, laughing and enjoying every moment. We can see how after the remedy, emotional and behavioral state of the patient has shifted from one opposite of the code for Ignatia Amara, powerless, to the other, joy. He was feeling better and sleeping a lot, going to bed around 10 p.m. instead of the usual 2 or 3 a.m. He couldn't even remember for how long he didn't have a deep sleep like that. His wife said he looks younger and more handsome and he was laughing with joy while he was telling us that. He started playing chess that he didn't play for ages and again he was laughing with joy. He felt refreshed like his batteries are charging. The things that used to aggravate him at work don't bother him that much anymore. He said he was very happy with the result of the homeopathic treatment so far. So we decided to watch and wait. He was exhilarated of joy, so in the sphere exhilaration with empathy of his syphilitic triangle of detractive. On the next follow-up, said that he didn't have any stomach problems. He was on several business trips after that without any problems. On the follow-up, after a month, his stool was fine and he talked about the big changes in his life. He started hiking on the nearby hills for 15 to 20 kilometers a day and he used to go everywhere by car and he barely walked. Now we are going on the matrix case taking. A simple truth Hahnemann states in the footnotes of the aphorism 11 that piece of iron is attracted by one pole of the magnet leads us to the essence of the matrix case taking. So this is how a matrix case taking goes. A homeopath listens to a patient talking about why he came and what bothers him until he recognizes a high emotional charge in the patient's words and behavior about the subject. That moment of high emotional charge is like if we would feel a magnetic field starting to pull us to the magnetic pole. If we would go in any other direction, we would stop feeling the pulling, so we need to keep following the rising magnetism in order to get to a magnetic pole. It is the same with the vital poles. That moment of high emotional charge is like if we would feel a magnetic field starting to pull us to the magnetic pole. Follow the patient's train of thoughts and emotions like a nail follows a magnet. After recognizing the high emotional charge, homeopath starts following its path by insisting on how the patient feels. As a homeopath gets closer to the first symptom, vital pole, the emotional charge starts to rise like some feeling of excitement. When it gets to its peak, we have reached the emotion or sensation that is one of the vital poles for this patient in his current condition. Then emotional catharsis may follow, but that wouldn't heal the patient's emotional scar. Only the similimum may balance and integrate the vital poles of the patient. 
This catharsis is like reopening of an old wound, painful but gives us a chance to heal this emotional wound per primam without a scar. When the scar is healed, the patient no longer remembers emotional charge, only an empty shell of the event that caused the expression of the first symptom. In that moment, as he reaches the peak of the emotional charge, a patient names the first symptom one vital pole. Right then, the opposite vital pole presents itself. As we insist on getting to one of the polar opposites, the emotional charge rises. Just like one-sided view on any issue elevates the emotions and creates tensions. The matrix case taking works if we let the patient go down his emotional path. A homeopath is here to help the patient to follow his own emotions without falling into a trap of rationalizing his feelings. A homeopath has to be a true impartial observer, because neither a homeopath or a patient can know where this emotional path will lead us. The unprejudiced observer, as Hahnemann describes a homeopath in the aphorism 6, is the ultimate goal in perfecting the art of case-taking. Case-taking with the matrix method gets closer to the ideal of unprejudiced observer because we just have to keep the patient focused on his most intense emotion at that moment. The Matrix method is so good for uh, case-taking because we don't explain the words of a patient, we just accept them and pass them through. We don't input ourselves in the case, we don't make judgments because these are the moments when the mirror of truth bends. We are like witnesses. A judgment has many faces, and one of the trickiest is the diagnosis. Even though we homeopaths don't use diagnosis like appendicitis, tonsillitis, salpingitis, there is still stubborn, anxious, lazy. If we make conclusions, we are not absolutely objective, and that is reason enough to miss the sole remedy similimum. When we make a conclusions, we are often wrong. Only the words of a patient are the truth for us, and we should have faith in a person and what he is telling us. An illness is a state that is present with symptoms. Symptoms are signs of disrupted vital force in a person. The organism reacts to all kinds of disorders with a quite limited number of symptoms, so one symptom leads us to many remedies in the repertory. Getting to know the first symptom of a disorder greatly reduces the number of remedies a differential diagnosis for prescription. As the vital force is primarily deranged by the dynamic influence upon it of morbific agent inimical to life, organon of reason 11, its reaction is also dynamic, a hidden invisible energy, Hahnemann. The dynamic reaction will first affect the higher, more subtle planes of a human being, the mental and emotional. To help us recognize the remedy for the disrupted vital force, the patient needs to find most suitable words to express his feelings when it all began, the first symptom. To recognize it, we need to learn how to watch, listen, wait, and help a patient to follow his own emotions when he strays to rationalization. The words patient used to express the first symptom of the disorder is the vital pole. The vital pole with its opposite paints the state of the vital force, presents it, but at the same time the despair of opposites enslaves it, limits it, conditions it and may lead to its demise. After the similimum, the vital poles get back in balance, liberating the patient from all the barriers and limitations. 
Just like when someone turns the key in the lock of a cage and the being gets out of it into a whole new world. New horizons appear. The eyes get wide open, they can see again. When the vital poles get back in balance after the similimum, it first happens on high spiritual levels and then uh, the changes slowly follow on all levels. First on mental level, then emotional and at the end physical level as the most material, heaviest and most inert. We homeopaths have a special bond creating one energetic circle like a family and we should always keep together and share our knowledge and experience. Thank you for joining me today. Uh, I hope this lesson was useful for you and you can read more about the Matrix Method and the Tractis Model in our two books published by Bajain. Also, I want to thank uh, my dear colleagues, Dr. Stan Primovic and Dr. Andreas Kellerman uh, for their uh, great uh, contribution, my family and my dear patients, uh, whose experience was my guide on this journey. Thank you.